All right, sup guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Trice Too Easy. We are gonna go ahead, dive into week nine NFL. We'll look at the charts, the matchups, let's look at some of the trends, see what the teams are doing. And hopefully we crack these folks and get some good reads and play some good uh, good action. Um, if you would like to join my sports community and discord server, it's in the pinned comment and in the description of the video. And if you want access to exclusive perks for my viewers and communities and tools that I use daily, like Smart Stake, like Outlier, they're in the pinned comment and in the description of the video as well. Okay, guys, NFL week nine should be a great one. There's a lot of good games. Uh, we're also going to look at ladder day three. We've cashed day one. We cashed day two. Forgot to put day two in the video yesterday. I did put it in the pinned comment and replied to all the comments. I also shared it on Twitter and Discord. I did forget to put it in the YouTube video. I will put day three in this video today. So before we get into the slate, I'm not doing any props today. There's a prop I bet every week is Jackson Smith, Nick So If you guys want to want a prop, I, I do place that every single week. Um, outside of that, though, uh, we'll look at latter day three and then we'll just get into the slate. We'll break it down. I'll go over each game and tell you guys what I'm thinking. OK, guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it, starting with latter day three. It's going to be uh, Chubba Hubbard rushing and receiving uh, 30 or more at minus 110. The price is just too good to pass up. The coach did come out and, and say that Rico Dowdle will be getting majority of the workload, as he should. The guy's running out of his mind right now. Maybe it's luck. Maybe he's just great. I thought he was great last year. So he's a phenomenal running back, and he should get majority of the workload. That said, Chubb is still a much better receiving back than Dowdle is. So I think it, and he'll get a lot more passing. He'll be in there on a lot more passing plays, which gives him chance to pick up large yards. And I also think that the, the opposing team, the Packers, when Chubba comes in, they'll be thinking pass, which should e soften up the front for Chubba to maybe even break. I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks a 30-yard run, 20-yard run today, just off the fact that I think when he comes in, they'll be thinking pass, and that should give him a little bit more of a hole. Now, if the coach does just completely bench Chubba, then yeah, this play's cooked. It, the bet will lose. But I don't think you take your locker room. He's basically the team captain. He's a he's a vet. He's great in the locker room. The team loves him, and he's still a superstar. I don't think you take him and just bench him. Yes, give Dowdle a little bit more, but I think it's probably a 60-40 split. I don't think it's going to be like 80-20. I think he'll still get his time. So I'm going to ride with him at this price. I can't pass it up. He's He clears this easily with, with a couple decent plays. Uh, so give me Chubba Hubbard for 30 or more rushing and receiving. I think we'll clear this relatively easily and early. Uh, also, make sure you're following me on Twitter or in the Discord because if this play hits, I'm probably going to do the fourth ladder play today because I like a lot of the late games and I also like the Sunday night football game. So you might see me do uh, three and four today. So make sure you got some way to get in touch with me if you're if you're doing a ladder with me. All right, guys. Uh, anyways, let's get into the slate. We'll talk about each of these games. I might need to reload it. Let me see. Uh, let's see here. Let me get situated. Slate review. I do. Hold on one moment. My, my, all my stuff crashed before I started the video. Okay. Are we good? All right. Great. Let's get it. First game Falcons versus the Patriots. Uh, this game's interesting guys. Uh, the Falcons are so janky. They, they like the New York Knicks. Like, how do you bet on this team and feel good about it ever? Patriots look amazing. Drake may looks like Tom Brady out there. I don't think there's any way we can get away from the Patriots. You can actually get a four and a half now, which is weird. Kind of a red flag, because why is it getting better? Um, when we look at the major discrepancies, you really see it in, their, in the Patriots' red zone defense and their scoring defense. You can't score on these Patriots, guys, and they can score on you. Uh, their scoring D is number fourth in the league. They have a great pass, a great rush. This defense is phenomenal, and they have a good offense. Let's not pretend they don't. Falcons can't stop anybody from scoring on them. And frankly, I don't think that their defense can stop the Patriots offense. Only thing I will say is the Falcons are still technically on paper, the, the best passing defense in football, but they've looked bad lately. I don't even trust them defensive numbers anymore. And I don't think their blitzing is going to do well versus a quarterback in the O-line like the Patriots and, and Drake May. So I got to be on the Patriots today to cover the spread. If we look at the chart, it was at minus 108. It went to minus 103. The Pats are taking most of the money, so it is weird that it went from five to four, and it is weird that the price is getting a little better, but this isn't anything drastic where I'm like, yo, this is a massive red flag. Vegas is trying to clean up. It's just a little strange, but the price is starting to go back down too, so yeah, just give me the Pats in game one. Next game, Bears and the Bengals. Uh, this one's tough. It's the Bengals at home. It's a hard place to play. Um... A lot of discrepancies here, obviously. The Bears offense, guys, super underrated. 10th in passing, 10th in rushing, uh, 15th in scoring. Like, they're not bad. 
This Bengals defense is terrible. All terrible. The worst defense in the league by far. I, I they are, it is so it is so disgusting. This defense is ass. It is ass. It is ass. You can't do nothing with them. They're terrible. Worst defense I've ever seen. Um, Bengals offense is back looking pretty good with Flacco in there. He's connecting and they're moving the ball and they're scoring. Defense is just still beyond pathetic. Um discrepancies rush defense and red zone uh rush defense versus the rush offense for the Bengals but the Bengals even been running the ball lately Chase Brown even looks pretty good for me guys why pick a side here neither of these teams are reliable they're both janky and they're both ass I am kind of impressed with the Bears but then I bet them last week and of course they shit to bed so you can't really trust them Lord knows you can't trust the Bengals but can we not trust both of these teams to score effortlessly versus the opposition? Bengals can score on anybody now that they got a quarterback. Again, they're, they're just too good offensively. And the Bears, we all know the Bengals can't stop anybody from scoring ever. Why don't you just take the over? Why pick a side? Give me the over 51 and a half. Uh, Bears were taking most of the money. Price staying stagnant at minus 115. Nothing really crazy going on with the chart. Uh, it's pretty standard stuff. Next game, 49ers versus the Giants. So, uh, Giants lost Scadaboo. As you guys know, his ankle bout flopped off his fucking body. It was awful. Um, major discrepancies here. 49ers are still the top passing team in all of football. Only second to the Cowboys. Uh, Giants pass defense is terrible. Rush defense is terrible. Red zone is scoring. these terrible. Th th their defense is just not good. Uh, and neither is their offense, frankly. I do think Jackson Dart's really good quarterback. I think he'll be a superstar, but without Scadaboo in there, I mean, look, all's not lost. Let's not pretend that Tyrone Tracy is ass. The guy can run the ball. He's really good. I mean, we're not going to sit here and just disrespect Tyrone Tracy like he's not a dog. I, he only really lost his spot to Scadaboo because the team needed changes and everybody was hyped on the guy. I mean, he was running pretty good, but I don't think it's like, I don't think Scadaboo is that much better than Tyrone Tracy Jr. I really don't. Um... I just think Scadaboo kind of fit what they're trying to do with Jackson Darden plus their homeboys. I think they had good, good, uh, what's it called when two people really flow well? Good, uh, good coordination? Hell nah. Uh, anyways, y'all know what I mean. I don't think Tyrone Trace that good. I don't think the Giants is taking too big of a step back, but I think the 49ers are just really fucking good. I think they have an offense and a defense advantage here. It's really that simple. Uh, I'm going to definitely be on the 49ers. Price is going down a bit. Makes sense. Standard stuff. They took a bit more money and the price went down. It's what you'd like to see. Give me the 49ers to cover this two and a half. Too low. Next game, Vikings versus the Lions. So you got the Lions laying eight and a half. It's kind of a lot. Vikings are on the road at the Lions at, in Detroit, though. Um, Major discrepancies here. Vikings rushing offense versus the Lions defense. Can't run on these Lions. We know that. Uh, the Lions red zone defense isn't great. Scoring defense has actually got a lot better since last year. But I, I still think they can't stop. No, I'm still not impressed with their defense, being honest. Um, as far as their offense, it's good. We know they can score. They're third in the league in scoring. Uh, Vikings D can't really stop nobody. You know, when I look at this game, I think we see a shootout. I think we see a lot of big plays. Um, I don't think either team stops the other team. And I think you got a total of 47 and a half. That's too low. Uh, for me, I'm going to be on the over, over 47 and a half in this one. If you wanted to lay the, the lions were taking a lot more money, went from one Oh two to one Oh eight ish, uh, chart went down a little bit. It's kind of been all over the place. Nothing crazy. No, like red flags or Vegas cleanup spots. But I think this is a high scoring game. A lot of big playmakers in this one. Give me the over 47 and a half next game chargers versus the Titans. Chargers laying 10 points, uh, kind of a lot, right? Chargers offense has been, it's one day. It looks like the best offense in the league next week. It looks terrible. They're hard to kind of get a read on. They're, they're just inconsistent in my opinion. That said, this Titans team is God awful. They're one in seven. They're one of the worst teams in football. They can't do anything right. These dudes, these dudes fucking suck. Uh, Chargers have a massive passing offense advantage. They're great at passing the ball. Rushing, I think they're good at rushing too. What sucks is they can't ever get in the damn end zone. 27th in the red zone. Like they get down there and they just can never score. Um, I think that changes this week. I think they'll score on these Titans just fine. Titans offense is awful. Chargers pass defense is sick, so they won't be able to pass. They won't be able to run. Chargers don't let anybody score on them. They're seventh in red zone D and 10th in, in scoring D. This Chargers team is very solid. If they could figure out how to start scoring when they get to the red zone, I think they'll be one of the best teams in football. Char uh, Chargers were taking most of the money, minus 107 down to minus 109. It's pretty stale, really. This is only a few cents. Nothing crazy here. Uh, I'm going to take the nine and a half with the Chargers. I think they'll clear it. I just think the Titans are awful. Next game, uh, best team in football with the Colts versus the Steelers at Pittsburgh. 
the toughest place there is to play. Steelers at home is is brutal. A uh, bunch of bunch of youngins uh, with black forces. NBA young boy be there. Uh, y'all know what it is, man. The Steelers there. It is a it is very hostile environment. It's hard to play at. That said, I don't think the Colts give a fuck. Uh, Colts are by far, in my opinion, the best team in football. I don't think it's close. Pass offense six, rush offense six, scoring offense first. They score on everybody, anytime, every drive. You can't stop them from scoring. Steelers are the, you have the worst pass defense in all of football. Versus the best scoring team in all of football. I'm not sure what we're doing here. What's up, big boy? What's up, big boy? Hey, babe. Can you grab me? Oh, no. Say no. <laughs> um, you got the best pa- scoring offense in all of football, number one, versus the 32nd absolute worst pass defense in all of football. They also have a bad rushing defense. Guys, there is there's, there's no way to get to the Steelers here. There is no fucking way. If the Colts don't cover this, it's rigged, like straight up. There's, there's, just, there's so many discrepancies. Steelers also can't really pass. They can't really run. Um, I will say the only thing that might keep this game close is the Colts pass defense on paper is terrible, but it's not because it's actually terrible. If you watch the games, it's because anytime you have a team who scores every time they get the fucking ball, all the opposing team ever does is pass first them they, they can never run because they're always behind and they throw all these big plays. So you get a lot of pass interferences. You get a lot of major bombs down the field because the Colts are just trying to win games. So they fall back and, and soften up coverage and they just slowly let them kind of score and pass on them. The pass defense in a competitive game is actually not bad. I don't think the Steelers have any chance here. Colts minus three and a half went from plus 104 to plus 100 and continues to drop. Give me the Colts to cover this spread. Next game. Broncos versus the Titans. This one's tough. There's not a lot of discrepancies. Uh, Broncos are good at the red zone, and the Texans don't stop anybody from scoring. Once you get to the red zone, they're terrible. Problem is, nobody gets to the red zones versus the Texans. Their defense is just too damn good. They are number one. They have the least amount of points scored on them in all of football. But on the flip side, the Broncos defense is number five in scoring. Red zone defense is number one. You damn sure can't score on them, boys. They're, this is a this is a battle of the defenses. These are just two of the best defenses in all of football. Texans, however, they don't score in the red zone, and the Broncos do. I think this ends up being the difference in the game. I think the Texans get to the red zone and don't score. I think the Broncos will get to the red zone maybe once or twice, and I think they will score. I think that ends up being the difference here. And on top of that, guys, when I look at this game, who is the better team? The Broncos. You're getting a pick them, basically. Uh, I'm not going to play the spread. Just give me the money line. Give me the Broncos straight up on the money line. The Texans were taking most of the money, and the line is flat at about 104. So something to note is most of the money is coming on the Texans. Next game, Panthers versus the Packers. These Panthers are ass. They are terrible. That said, Packers, you got to lay 14 points. That's kind of crazy with a Packers team who I am not that impressed with. Discrepancies, passing offense. Panthers are actually fourth. In football, in passing, it's kind of impressive with how ass they are. Scoring offense, though, is 27th. They move the ball, they never score. A lot of interceptions, a lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties. Don't ever punch it in. They go for it, they fail. Um, Packers defense is quite good. Packers offense, also above average. They're a good team. I They just never impress me, but they are pretty good. Panthers defense, mid. Uh, Panthers are better than we give them credit for. They're sitting on 4-4. Four and four. They're not an awful team, but, like, they are awful. At the same time, there's no way I could get to the Packers to cover 14 versus them. But I also can't get to the Panthers to cover the 14. They might lose. This is the one game of the day I chose to fade. I just have no idea. Most of the money coming on the Packers price is getting better. Bit of a red flag. I have no idea how to cap this game. I faded it. Next game, Jags versus the Raiders. So, got three and a half with the Jags. The Raiders are terrible. Terrible team. Um... As far as offense goes, the Jaguars pretty much have every advantage. Passing 17th versus the pass D, that's 20th. Rushing's pretty much even. Red zone, kind of even. Scoring offense, kind of even. The major discrepancies come from the, from the defense. Raiders are 27th in rushing. And Jags are 6th in rushing defense. 32nd in the red zone offense, worst in football versus the 20th. And 31st in scoring offense versus 15th scoring D. Jaguars have every advantage on defense and the offense versus defense is pretty even on the offensive side for the Jags. Uh, I think the Jaguars are a much better team. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lay the lay the it's down to two and a half. Now I'm going to lay the two and a half with the Jags. I will say minus 104 to 102 price getting worse, but they're taking most of money. You don't never want to see that, but it's not drastic. It's not where it's like they're taking 80% of the money and it went minus 120 to plus 100 and Vegas is clearly setting you up, but something to note. Anyways, give me the Jags. They're just a better team. Raiders suck. Next game. Saints versus the Rams. This one is tough because at this point, I don't even know who's starting for the Saints. I'm pretty sure that uh that uh Rittler got hurt. Um, so the Saints are gonna be terrible. That said, the Saints D is not no slouch, guys. They can stop the pass, they can stop the run, and they can stop teams in the red zone. They are 24th in scoring, and I don't know how. They're really not a bad defense. Rams offense is quite good. Rams defense is is okay. Um I'm not laying 14 points with anybody except the Colts. I'm not laying 14 points. I just can't, I just can't do it. Um, on top of that, the chart is just, it's a plus money for a 14 and a half. 14 and a half is just too much. I literally can't do it. This is either a fade or the saints plus 14 and a half for me. I, I cannot lay 14 and a half points with the Rams. I just can't. Um, I do think they're good, but God, 14 and a half. I'm on the Saints plus 14 and a half. I think it's too much, but it's probably a good game to fade. Who knows? Next game, Chiefs and the Bills. This will be a good one. Uh, major discrepancies here. Chiefs rushing offense versus the Bills rushing defense. Chiefs are actually ninth in rushing, which is crazy because they don't run great. But that boy, uh, that boy Pacheco, boy, he looked like he looked like he's running like the flash. He is fast as fuck. Uh, Bills are 31st in rushing defense. That's not good because the, the way the Chiefs can pick a team apart without a rushing D is very bad. They're already good at passing. It's really bad when you can't stop the run either. Um, as far as the Bills, passing offense is 15th. Chiefs is number three. Uh, this is, guys, the Bills are at home, though, in Buffalo. I think this game could go either way. I am just still not fully sold on the Chiefs, but I do think they're very good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride with Buffalo plus two and a half. I just don't think the Chiefs beat Buffalo on the road. It's probably gonna be freezing. I, I just don't think that they, I don't think they win. I don't think they can beat the Buffalo Bills on the road. These guys, these teams are so even. I just, I think you go with the one with the home advantage. Like they're dead even, in my opinion. So who do you go with? The one who's playing at home. That's kind of literally how I'm looking at it. Um, chart staying kind of stagnant. Plus 100 to minus 101. Pretty it's pretty stagnant. Chiefs are taking most of the money, but bills for me. Next and final game of the night, Commanders and the Seahawks. Guys, these Commanders, they suck. And I believe Jaden Daniels is still injured. I'm, I'm not positive on that. I, I think he's still out. I don't like to look too much into injuries because I, I am well aware that it's already baked into the, the spreads and whatnot. So I like to look at the team as a whole. Uh, the commanders just don't look good in my opinion. I think the rushing has kind of cooled off. They're still number three, but I think it's kind of cooled off and I don't think it's going to matter today anyways, because they are versus the number one rushing defense in all of football and the Seahawks. So even if that rushing is still third, which I don't think it is, and even if it is still elite, you can't run on the Seahawks. They damn sure can't pass the ball. Seahawks have a massive passing offense advantage, a massive red zone offense advantage and a massive scoring offense advantage. I don't see any way the commanders can even keep this game relatively close. Seahawks taking most of the money, minus 119 to minus 120. One of the juicier spreads you're going to lay today. There's no crazy charts, no crazy Vegas spots. Everything seems pretty legit. There's no major red flags, which is good. We might actually see a real, true, competitive, unrigged Sunday. Um, give me the Seahawks, minus two and a half. They're a much better team. That's all for me today, guys. Let's get out of here. Let's get an absolute bag, and let's crack these folks.